All right, today we're gonna to be breaking down these towers and looking inside of them. Now, before we jump inside of the buckets, let's take a quick look at the outside. And I want you guys to pay attention to a few things. And one thing is the plants, all of the kale on the different towers, the red, white, and blue one. Now, don't look too much at the bottom one of the white one. That's just some microgreens I put in there as a test. What we're paying attention to is the top two layers of each one. And they all look pretty much the same. We're going to harvest it all. We could let these go a little while longer, but I've got some more plants to put in here and we want to experiment with a lot of different things, so we're just going to harvest them. And we'll bring the buckets over here. We're going to check inside. I'm going to bring one of each color, red, white, and blue. Now I haven't looked inside of these yet, so it's going to be just as much a surprise to me as it is to you. Now we'll take a look inside, and the first one's the red firehouse buckets. Now as you can see, there's not hardly any algae in here at all. I don't see any. It looks pretty good. And if you're wondering why the level is so low, I told you all to keep these filled up, right? Maintain your level, like right up in here at the top. Now, if you do that up until harvest, you're going to waste a lot of nutrients. So what I did was, I didn't refill this one at all. I just left it. This is how much nutrients these use since I put them in. So we're going to go over like cost of nutrients and things and I kind of wanted just to measure everything. So we'll do that in the next video. So make sure you go ahead and follow because next week we're going to go over the actual cost of the nutrients and everything. Talk about that extensively. But since we're just talking about the algae, I did let this go down was because I didn't want to waste the nutrients. But usually you would keep it up to level. And what you can do is a couple of weeks, two, three weeks before you actually harvest it, let it start dropping and then that way you don't waste a whole lot of nutrients. All right, now this is inside the white bucket. You can see it looks like quite a bit of algae in there. It's all over the roots and basically it's down on the bottom. You can still see that the nutrient solution is clear. You can see right through it. So there's quite a bit of algae on the bottom and on the roots, but the liquid itself looks kind of clear. And here's the blue bucket. It basically looks like the red bucket. Doesn't look like there's any algae involved. Another thing is, if you guys noticed, there wasn't any mosquitoes in any of these. Now we do have mosquitoes in the yard and they're flying around. So there are mosquitoes out there, but none of them have laid any eggs. You know, who knows, maybe another week or two, some might hatch in here, but I haven't had a problem with any of them. Okay, now this white bucket that we checked that had algae was up on top. So the sides were exposed and the top was exposed. The bottom two, these were stacked, so the top was covered. So the bottom two were just exposed on the sides. So we'll take a look at those. You can see the one that's in the middle. Open it up. And there's a little bit of algae in this one, but not to the extent of the top one. Let's check out the bottom one. And this is the same thing. There's a little bit of algae, not as bad as the top one. So the top one had the most because the top was exposed. Now let's check some of the other ones, the other red one. And we can't really see. It looks good, but uh, we can't really tell inside the red bucket. So what I'm going to do is take one of these white buckets, clean the algae off the bottom, and just use a pool noodle. You know, pool noodles to the rescue, right? Scrub it off the bottom. So it's nice and clean. And then we'll pour in the nutrient solution from the red bucket. And as you can see, the nutrient solution looks basically like the, the master blend. It, there's no algae. This is basically what our nutrient solution looks like when we first pour it in. And the blue bucket looks the same. I'm not going to dump it out. I can tell there's no algae in here. So if you look over here where I've got the roots and the rock walnut in a bag, uh, you can tell the difference between the roots 
they came out of the red buckets and which ones came out of the white buckets. Now even though the white buckets got some algae, go back and look at the different towers and you're going to notice that all the kale looked about the same, right? So even though we got algae in these and we didn't get algae in the other ones, it didn't really affect the growth of the kale. Now, the kale was only a few weeks old and if we let this go two, three, four more weeks, you know, who knows, it might just mess it up and that might not be good for it. But for my purposes, what we're doing, like I said, we took kale, transplanted it into here. That's why we're growing fast growing leafy greens, the ready, the harvest. You saw how much kale we got out of that and for literally pennies. And what we're doing is now I've already got in the downspout some more plants that we're going to take and put into here. So we're going to switch them out, start all over, plant some more microgreens and keep the cycle going over and over again. All right. So what do you do if you want to keep the algae out? Maybe it bothers you. You don't like it. Or maybe you want to grow a crop that takes a lot longer and you're going to leave your plants in here two, three, four weeks, a couple months longer than I do. Um, number one, you can paint it which my wife's doing that. She's doing a couple of them right now. They're looking pretty cool. Another thing you can do is head over to Healing Hobbies where she's covered it with this material like we had talked about. And I make my grow tents out of. This is just foil. It's like bubble wrap with foil on both sides. And I use this to wrap our wire rack so we can make like a little grow tent. And I've also covered some containers with it. Uh, she's took it, covered up her tower and she put strawberries in it so a lot of you are always asking me about strawberries you ask me about a lot of things and I say start with greens start with greens I want you guys to learn how to do that because if you're doing like I'm doing where we we harvest we grow we harvest and then we have another crop coming right in and you keep doing that and you just have this loads and loads of leafy greens all the time you're gonna enjoy doing that and you're gonna learn you're gonna be doing it over and over but if you want to grow some other crops Go check her out because she put some strawberries in there and a lot of people asked about strawberries. So check out Healing Hobbies. She shows you a real cool way to do this, to, to wrap it and how to put it on here. And also a, an alternative to how to cut these holes if you don't have a hole saw or a drill. I saw a lot of people say, oh, now I got to go get power tools. Well, she shows a cool way to make these holes without any power drill. So check that video out. I will link that in the description below. This stuff is really handy too. I used a lot of that. So I don't stress much about the algae and what I'm gonna do. Like we said, Healing Hobbies is doing that. All of you out there, other gardeners who have YouTube channels or just other gardeners who wanna be on YouTube. Um, if, if you're doing this, if you're building this, go build some towers. It's, it's simple. You get a couple of buckets, drill some holes, you know, get some nutrients, you're in business. A lot of you went out to bakeries and that and you've been getting these free. A lot of you have got these free. I've looked around. I don't really want to bother everybody at my delis and everything right now. But if I need to, I'm going to start bothering everybody. I just paid for mine. I got uh, some at Firehouse Subs for three bucks a piece. That was a deal. If you can get these for two bucks like some of you all are doing or a dollar or free, that's an even better deal, right? So if your other gardeners build these, it doesn't cost a whole lot. Throw some plants in it. You saw within a couple of weeks how we grew kale just grow some leafy greens if you want to try different crops do it whatever you do whether it works or it doesn't i want to hear about it because we're all sharing our experiences i'll put you on this channel and i'll show you to everybody else but i think the more of us that do this the better we can all share our ideas and share our results and to me i'm excited about this we're on our second crop already i'll do that in the next video i'm going to show you we're going to be replanting this and because you guys asked for tomatoes and peppers i'm going to plant a bunch of them in here i don't know how the tomatoes will do it's going to be a warm summer i think we've already hit uh the 90s here in florida i know you guys some of you around the united states uh, uh, it got cold again and you had a cold snap go through so it's real freaky weather going up and down and up and down but we had some hot weather already and if it gets really hot in a couple of weeks you know tomatoes we can have a big bushy plant with all the blossoms on it and they won't set any tomatoes because it'll be too hot so we'll see how it goes you know you guys want to see so we're going to go ahead 
and plant some tomatoes out we'll plant some peppers but like I said I don't want you guys to get confused and and be anxious and do that first off right off the bat I want you guys to learn how to do greens and do it over and over like I said I want you to learn how to do this continuous harvest thing because when you start growing like tomatoes you grow a plant it's like one season you grow a plant you wait for the fruits you know and when that plants done basically you have to start all over and either you try one in the late fall and sometimes it, it turns cold on you and, and you don't have a chance to get any fruit so uh, with leafy greens just like we did the kale we've already got the second batch coming in I can plant a third batch and this is just with six towers that we have out here right now so these things are cheap they're easy to use and you can grow an abundance of food so we're gonna have a lot of fun like I said so we're gonna test out a little bit of tomatoes and peppers um, but we've got loads of leafy greens growing right now we've got them in our driveway wait till you see next week it's really funny because we've got it out in the front where all the neighbors can see it so I'm enjoying this like I said if you guys are gardeners out there if you're doing this a lot of you are in our Facebook group and I love seeing what you're doing a lot of you are over on Thinkific um, and that our community over there the links down in the description and you guys get in there share your pictures we want to see what you're doing if you've got questions ask questions um, any question you know but if we need to we'll do more videos like the frequently asked questions to cover all of it but I, I want to answer your questions in that because I want everybody doing this this is it's it's fun it's helping a lot of families it can help your family and like we said we can't feed the world but maybe we can teach the world how to feed itself get out there live to inspire keep on growing be the change we'll catch you next week